Hey everyone, welcome to chapter three, one week post-op. And what a week it's been. So, uh, Friday morning as scheduled on August 11th, I went into the hospital, 5.30 a.m., and I uh, was the only case for that operating room. So, uh, I didn't have to wait for much, and it uh, got me all checked in, 7.30 in the morning. I uh, went back, I was asleep shortly after, and the procedure took all day and all evening. I got to my room at 11 o'clock at night. Um, I'm talking to my surgeon, and I'm going to go through a couple other things. I'm talking to my surgeon about, you know, the how they handle a surgery that that's long, that's that long, which he didn't expect it to be that long, but he just said, you know, I use the uh, Toyota quality manufacturing approach where you do something slow and right the first time so you don't have to go back and fix it again. Um, and I really appreciated that. He said he had studied that in undergraduate school and it, uh, it's a philosophy he uses in his medical care. And that was just really something that, that hit home with me. He said he had to take a few breaks, but there was always at least, uh, two residents in there with me. Um, if he wasn't, so I'm sure I was in good care. It wasn't about that. It was just how they handled those logistics. So, um, so the surgery itself, the cancer was much more widespread than expected. Um, it was on my trachea. It was, well, I guess it was on a lymph node that was, that was well, well adhered to my trachea is what I should say. Uh, that's gone all clear margins. Um, and we got the pathology back yesterday. It's a particularly aggressive version of papillary thyroid cancer, which doesn't change much for me, except they're going to really watch me closely. And I think it's a diff diffuse variant type or something. I can't remember off the top of my head. But in any event, that's uh, that's the result of the surgery. I did have a complication that was not unexpected in which my drainage was much, uh, much more excessive than they expected and included this fatty fluid called chyle, C-H-Y-L-E. Um, that kept me in the hospital two extra days. So I was in the hospital a total of five nights, so uh, Friday to Wednesday. And uh, so I'm home now with the two drains, which I'm trying to keep out of the frame slightly. Um, but they are there and still draining, but have greatly reduced how much they're coming out. And these drains should be removed on Monday. Um, I'm curious about how that happens. I don't want to look up it up too much. I'll be glad to get them gone, but I hope it's not a miserable process. But in any event, the Kyle flow had gotten so high over the weekend that they were pretty confident they were going to have to operate on me again on Monday morning. And then Sunday night, with the uh, reduction of fat in my diet, a medication they were giving me that they can only give me in the hospital, and I guess just healing, um, it slowed. And they did not have to do that. I was terrified I was going to have to have more surgery. Um, I would say, though, I felt so much better than I possibly could have, even on Saturday. I mean, I felt terrible Saturday, but the pain, the pain level was low. Um, I could get around, uh, I was not thrilled when, uh, occupational therapy showed up on Saturday and wanted me to do 17 exercises. I got through some of them, but sat Sunday I was able to get through all of them. Um, they just said there's a lot of evidence to show getting moving quickly really speeds recovery. So, so from this point on, I'll get the drains out. Um, I will get the radioactive iodine in about two months and then we're just going to keep washing things, but Dr. Farzad Mazor, M-A-S-R-O-O-R at GBMC and his residence team. I just can't say enough about them. They are all top-notch people. All the residents were from Hopkins, um, and he's just got such a pedigree that uh, I don't even have time to mention it on this, on this uh, video. And what's funny is, how do you know how to find a head and neck surgeon? You don't. I mean, you don't go to your Rolodex and find your head and neck surgeon listed there. Um, I'm sure some people have to research. I'm just fortunate enough to live in an area where we have great medical facilities. Um, I'd also like to take a chance, a minute to thank my wife who has stood by me every step of the way here, has made sure every single thing on my diet that I could eat when I came home was in this house when I got here, which includes gummy bears, um, and frosted flakes. And they were both here. Um, my kids, my grandkids, my daughter-in-law's mom, Ellen, who organized 
a meal train, mostly for Vicky, so Vicky doesn't have to worry about dinners because I'm on a special diet. The people who've sent notes, I can't name you all, and cards and flowers and everything. Um, the outpouring of love and support has just been overwhelming in a time where I was really scared. Um, and I didn't know what it was going to be like coming out. Oh, I guess I just didn't mention this part, but, you know, some of the complications where they were worried about me being able to lift my arm up over my head. You can't see it, but it is. Um, my voice obviously is normal. Um, so none of the nerves that they said could be involved, um, were involved. Um, so I have no complaints, none. Uh, it's just been blessing after blessing of feeling the lump, finding the right care people, getting it done early, and now on to the vigilant time of making sure that if it does come back, which is about a 20 to 25% chance, we find it early and just get it taken care of. Because I am uh, not ready to go anywhere yet. Seeing my five grandkids at different times during after surgery uh, or after surgery has just been so fantastic. Um, the love that they give me, um, I just don't know what to say about it. So anyway, that's chapter three. I'm sure I missed some stuff and I'll add it in chapter four. But um, it's been a while since I posted. I just wanted to let everybody know what's happening with me. Thank you all. I love you. Bye-bye.